Hello everyone, this is Jim Lucy, Editor-in-Chief for Electrical Wholesaling and Electrical Marketing with episode 84 for the November 20th edition of the Today's Electrical Economy podcast series sponsored by Champion Fiberglass. The company began producing epoxy fiberglass conduit and fittings in 1988 and in 1989 developed the first conduit from epoxy resins that had flame resistance and low smoke characteristics. This met the most stringent codes and specifications. In this podcast, we'll take a look at the latest trends in electrical marketing's electrical price index and check out some weekly economic indicators that can give you a sense of where the electrical market may be headed in the near future. These five weekly indicators are Initial unemployment claims at the state level Rail freight car traffic The Baker Hughes rig count Oil prices and copper prices Our thanks again to Champion Fiberglass for sponsoring today's Electrical Economy Podcast Series for 2023. And I'd like to publicly thank them for sponsoring this podcast series again next year. For the week ending November the 11th, the advanced figure for seasonally adjusted initial unemployment claims was 231,000. That is an increase of 13,000 from the previous week's revised level. The four-week moving average was up to 220,250, and that is an increase of 7,750 from the previous week's revised average. The unemployment rate for October is 3.9%. The 10 states with the biggest decreases in unemployment claims for the week ending in November the 10th were Oregon, down 1,364, Georgia, down 1,221. All other states in the top 10 had less than 1,000 uh, decreases, and they were Pennsylvania, down 737 to 11,504. Illinois was down in their claims for, to 603 drop, that is down to 9,537. 9, Arizona was down 587 claims to 2,862. Arkansas down 586 to 876 claims. North Carolina sitting now at 3,392. They are down 550 claims. Missouri down 2,357, down 413 claims. Alabama down 391 to 1,835 claims. And Iowa down 335 claims to 2,120. In the data for the week ending November the 11th, we had three states with the increase in claims of more than a thousand. Uh, leading the pack was Massachusetts with an increase of 2,961 claims to 5,979. New York was up 2,787, now sitting at 16,559. Minnesota now at 6,487, up 1,371. New Jersey saw an increase of 915, now sitting at 11,034. Texas up 830 to 17,018. Indiana was up 629 to 3,862. California up 470 to 44,801. Ohio up 424, now sitting at 6,893. And Utah now at 2,111, up 283 claims. An interesting leading indicator that I always like to keep an eye on is the overall freight traffic in the United States. It measures the amount of raw materials and finished goods being shipped by rail. The best source for this data is the American Association of Railroads, or AAR. It publishes this data weekly. Total U.S. weekly rail traffic was 497,348 car loads and intermodal units, and that is up 3.4% compared with the same week last year in November. Total combined U.S. traffic for the first 45 weeks of 2023 was 21 million 83,591 carloads and intermodians. That is a decrease of 3.6% compared to this time last year. The weekly average for 2023 is 472,148 carloads, and we are riding slightly above that weekly average over the past couple of weeks. When you take a look at the individual freight categories, you will find that seven of the 10 carload commodity groups posted an increase compared with the same week last year in 2022. These categories posting the increases, Coal, up 1,793 carloads. Motor vehicles and parts, up 1,707 carloads. Metallic ores and metals, up 1,520 carloads. The freight commodity groups that posted decreases compared with this this week last year were non-metallic minerals, down 1,168 carloads. Farm products, excluding grain and food, down 113 carloads. And chemicals, down 95 carloads to 30,673. If you track the oil market, you're probably familiar with the Baker Hughes rig count. This tracks the oil and gas rigs that are operating in the United States. The data is available by state, by basin, and nationally at www.rigcount.bakerhughes.com. This slide gives you an idea of the largest oil and gas deposits. It really gives you a good 
good sense of just how many of the large oil plays are in Texas and Oklahoma, and how big an area the Marcellus gas region covers in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and parts of West Virginia. The total number of oil and gas rigs in the United States increased by two in the most recent data and now stands at 618 operating rigs. That's down 164 rigs from this time last year, and that is a 21% decline. On a state basis, Texas has seen the biggest annual decline in the rig count, with a 19.5% drop of 73 rigs to 302 operating rigs. Together, the state's Permian and Eagle Ford Basin have 60 fewer rigs operating now than they did at this time last year in 2022. Of the major oil producing states, New, New Mexico is the only one that is up year over year with a 3.9%. It's up two rigs for the week, and its total rig count right now stands at 107. According to the folks at macrotrends.net, the current price of West Texas Intermediate Crude or WTI crude oil as of November 20th is $77.75. Looking back year over year, it's slightly below the average with price, which was $78.05 per barrel. Economists like to call copper pricing Dr. Copper because it's a leading economic indicator for future economic activity since copper is used in so many industries. The construction industry is among the leading markets because of its use in wiring cable and copper plumbing pipe. The current price for copper as of November the 20th is $3.76 per pound on the COMEX exchange. Over the past six months, copper prices on the COMEX really haven't changed all that much. They haven't, they haven't broken below $3.50 per pound and they haven't been over $4 per pound since late April. In the chart shown right now, I'm showing you a chart for the spot copper prices from Kitco. Uh, we normally have used the macrotrends.net data for the COMEX prices, but uh, over the past couple of weeks, there's some errors in the data that they're uh, distributing, and I'm just going to wait before I can, that's corrected before I'll, I'll go back to the macrotrends data. Now let's take a look at which electrical product groups were the most movement over the past month. Electrical wholesaling gets this little pricing data from the Electrical Price Index, which is published each month by Electrical Marketing Newsletter. You can get the full data set from more than 20 key electrical product groups from Electrical Marketing as part of a $99 subscription to the Electrical Marketing Newsletter. S&P Global compiles this data for Electrical Marketing from the U.S. Department of Commerce's monthly producer price index. I pulled some data up for the electrical products that had the biggest increases on a month-to-month -month basis and a year-over-year -year basis. Total index on a monthly basis is up 0.4%. It's pretty close to the uh, monthly average, but I believe it's about a 0.2%. Uh, power wire and cable had a huge increase for the month, 9.1%. As you'll see in the next slide, uh, the historical trend for power wire and cable is, not, is running quite a bit over you know, their electrical products and over the total indexes as a whole. Uh, pole line hardware up 1.8%. Boxes up 1.2%. Uh, other Products that showed some increase, but nothing too major. Metal conduit was up 0.5% for the month, and building cable up 0.3. Conduit fittings just at zero for no change. Uh, we're seeing some bigger changes, as you can imagine, the year over year increases. Total index for the uh, year over year about 2.8%, and it's running, running pretty close to the historical average on a year for the year over year changes. But we did see some big, big changes in wiring devices and connectors over the year over year comparison, up 25.7%. Metal conduit up 15.1%, circuit breakers up 7.7%, and industrial controls up 7.6%. Also up big were panel boards and switches, that's 6.9% increase, transformers up 6.8%, and fuses up 6.3%. We had switch gear up 4.6%, and fasteners up 4.4%. And we're getting to some smaller increases here, but lamps were up 3.9%, and we had motors up 1.1%. Now let's take a look at how some of the biggest movers in, in pricing over the past couple of years, how they compare to the total index. Uh, in this chart here, the total index from the electrical price index on this is again month to month basis. Total index, the line is in blue. I think you'll see that uh, the, the ones that the products that are tracking pretty close to the total index are really they for historically, and this goes back to 2018 through uh, October 2018 through the present time. Uh, building wire and cable pretty much uh, tracks right along with the total index all the way through. Uh, power cable, which is the line in gray, you can see some pretty good size spikes there. And most re and it's kind of, kind of the more recent times, as you can imagine, the post-COVID era, which we've seen some pretty good spikes. And again, that's the gray line. You can see them way up, and this is on a monthly basis, way up over that uh, 5% uh, increase. They also had a big increase in 2022. 
and that's the power wire. And then if you look at the power wiring cable, and also earlier this year, we had a spike of over 10. And as we just mentioned, we were up quite a bit this past month. Uh, metal conduit, with the exception of one spike earlier this year, has pretty much held true to the uh, total index for the monthly change, the average there. As you can see in this slide, some of the changes can become much more apparent on a year-over-year -year basis, where some of a couple of the different product groups definitely stray from that uh, line of the total index. Again, total index is the blue line. Uh, it kind of peaked in the change. It was up about 20% year-over-year uh, earlier last year, and it, it kind of settled right back down to it's just, just over 1% uh, change, right? a little bit less than 1% change right now. Um, you look at the building wire. Uh, Again, it's the kind of spiked, and this is all kind of more it's interesting. That it's more recent history when we're seeing a lot of the spikes. Building wire in the orange there started taking off uh, just around in the COVID era for sure. Uh, peaked it up between 30 and 40 percent uh, in late 2021. Kind of came back to came back to earth uh, since that time, and for the most part is tracking pretty closely with the uh, total index. And that, that kind of did surprise me. I was expecting to see a little more variability with building wire overall, but other than the uh, historical change that we saw in pricing, you know, in the post-COVID era, it's really held pretty true. Power wiring cable, much as with the month to month, that is the gray line. And you can see how much over the, uh, that gray line is over the, uh, the blue for the total index. And it's gone, it's kind of astronomical, looking at over 50% change in power wiring cable prices in early 2002. Uh, spiking, as you can see, well, and most of the time it's spending almost all of its time uh, over the uh, total index price, it did dip but briefly in uh, late 2022, but as we showed in the monthly data, it is spiking again. Um, I did put metal conduit in there as well, just to kind of give you a sense of where that has gone. And with all the, with all the changes in steel, other than a change kind of started about this year, it has held pretty true. But you can see again, that yellow line it, uh, was following along with the total index price increases since 2018 to the only time it, that we're showing according to electrical marketing data, uh, a large price was just about late 2022. 2023. Uh, we do offer as part of our electrical market and subscription price, if you ever need historical data on any of the 20 product groups, we have it going back to 1990s. Do you really kind of get a sense of where products have been? And uh, obviously, with the more, if you want to monitor it on a more recent level, uh, all the data is in there uh, as well as part of that $99 subscription. wraps up our podcast for today. And a special thanks to the folks from Champion Fiberglass for sponsoring the Today's Electrical Economy Podcast Series for 2023 and again in 2024. Please contact me if there's any other type of economic data that you would like us to cover in these podcasts. Our next presentation will be on December the 4th, 2023. So until then, I hope you enjoy your Thanksgiving. I hope you get a chance to spend some time with family and friends over some good meals. And I look forward to talking with you about two weeks. Until then, be happy, be healthy, and I'll enjoy chatting with you on December the 4th.